Hello, book two. I have one of two tags for you today. I'm doing two tags to sort of uh, stay uh, abreast of tags that are out there. Uh, the, one of them I wasn't tagged in for obvious sonic reasons, <laughs> and the other one I was tagged in. Uh, the, this is the, uh, the uh, I think it's called the buy the bet tag. Uh, believe it or not, I did not write that thing down. It was created by Adrian at Strip Cover Lit. Uh, and it's the latest in there. They are dedicated now to doing a video a day in 2019, which... I don't know how anybody would do a video a day, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, uh, they're dedicating Tuesdays to tags, and their tags in 2019 have been incredible, just incredible. I find it hard to believe that they're going to be able to maintain this kind of a run on high-quality tags. I expect that sometime around May or June, the stress will get to them, they'll start drinking more heavily than usual, they'll start to look a wreck on camera, we might even see a fist fight. Uh, a brief fist fight, but a fist fight all the same. Uh, and, but in the meantime, we can certainly revel in these tags because they, they are on a roll. These are wonderful. Uh, it brings me back to uh, Michael S. Deutsch. A lot of you won't remember him uh, if you're new to BookTube. He, he was our previous tag king, and now he's been gone for some, quite some time, and these tags are wonderful. Uh, so uh, I'm going to tag a bunch of people in the uh, in the show notes, as Sean the Book Maniac calls it. I'm not going to tag anybody in the video itself, because I always end up forgetting people. Uh, but the, the tag is simplicity itself. It's to attach a word to every letter of the English alphabet that somehow connects with your channel, or your obsessions, or your tics. <laughs> I, I think it's hilarious uh, <laughs> that in the, in the show notes of his own video, Adrian listed the alphabet <laughs> so, thanks very much <laughs> but, uh, uh, so we start with the letter a and the letter a stands for awesome which this channel is and which i am uh, uh number uh, letter b would be boston uh those of you who are new to the channel or quite a few of you who are new to the channel as we inch our way steadily towards 6,000 subscribers and 2,000 videos. It looks like those two milestones might actually happen in the same day. <laughs> they're, they're right neck and neck with each other to happen, which is just unbelievable. The, the 6,000 subscribers part is unbelievable just as it is, because as I've said all along, I expected a couple of book critics and Deb to watch this channel and no one else. <laughs> Maybe Chris and Giselle, because it was their idea, so they would watch out of pity when it flopped. <laughs> and, and the 2,000 videos, I think, is a landmark, because I don't think anyone on BookTube has ever done that. Uh, I think that would be my distinction alone, which would be great. <laughs> uh, but anyway, Boston is where I'm making videos from. It is uh, it is my home. It is my favorite place on Earth. And if you ever visit me here, which I strongly encourage you to do, I will tell you all about it, <laughs> whether you want me to or not. <laughs> uh, then C. C stands for Canada. And Canada is my family in the literal and the uh, figurative sense. <laughs> Canada are the the dogs of the world, all of whom but one species I have met. I have never met a dingo. Uh, but I've met all the others. And uh, they're my people. <laughs> so they couldn't be off this tag. Uh, then D is Deb. Uh, a lot of you who are new to the channel will not know who I'm talking about. Uh, Deb is my alter ego, my counterpart. Uh, she has an odd dozen or so times been my wife, my woman, my Mugato woman, <laughs> and uh, and I'm hoping to get her back on the channel in 2019. That would be great, because every time she's on, you all like her more than you're like me. <laughs> so, uh, then E stands for Erasmus, the Dutch humanist Erasmus, whose not, name is not exactly well known in literary circles, but he is, he is as the kids say these days, my bae. <laughs> uh, then F, F is Frida. <laughs> Frida is my uh, my one year old miniature schnauzer. <laughs> so you go into the game. Who I got uh, when the last of my of my the second of my two old dogs, Mail and Moore, was dying. She was she was been old and weak and frail and sick for quite some time. But at the, in the time that, that uh, Frida came to me, just given to me by a friend, that was when Malin was in that, that two or three month period when the, the, the person involved is not sick anymore and they're not old anymore. They are dying. And uh, I didn't know how that would go. And another wonder of this BookTube channel is that you were all with me for all of it. You, you were... You were ecstatic about how cute my Bassetown Lucy was. You were ecstatic about my girls together when they were in videos. 
Uh, you were right there by my side when I lost Lucy. You were right there by my side when I was losing Malin. You were right there by my side when I lost Malin. And you have embraced Frida. So, I, that, of course, I had to include her. Uh, then, G, we're going to go with Gerald of Wales <laughs> here. He is a, uh, a cleric who wrote a thousand years ago and who's, who was the best known and best selling author of his day. Nobody reads him anymore. Only medievalists and antiquarians even know his name. I think that in the proper translation, with the proper notes, he could make a comeback. <laughs> Just a big, fat book called Gerald of Wales, maybe 800, 900 pages long, that includes new English translations of almost everything major that he wrote, plus lots of notes and a great introduction. Oh, what I wouldn't give. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to include him. Uh... Then H is for Harold Bloom, <laughs> the, the uh, still just barely living and with us literary critic, uh, who finds alphabetical texts both subtly heretical and yet possessed of a certain gamine charm. <laughs> uh, then I, I is for infallibility, book two. In matters of faith, that quality is reserved for His Holiness the Pope. And in matters of books... That quality is reserved for me. Okay. <laughs> uh, then uh, j letter J would be for jutting pecs, which I have. Uh, letter K is for a little town named Keokuk. Uh, uh, letter L would be for Lucy, the aforementioned fat, gassy, demented basset hound. She wasn't just simple. She was Mary Todd Lincoln. She heard voices. <laughs> but I miss her. She's one of those dogs, one of those special dogs that just gets to you. And every other time b before Lucy, I'd had a handful, a tiny number of those dogs before her. And in every instance before her, the feeling was mutual. To the point where I just assumed that it had to be mutual. But no, I worshipped the ground Lucy walked on and she didn't care about me at all. She was impatiently impatiently demanding of me to her last week of life. <laughs> but I loved her anyway. Uh, and if you dig back far enough in those aforementioned 2000 videos, you will see her. She's made appearances in videos of mine. Uh, then letter M. Uh, M, we have a three-way tie. <laughs> Where first is going to go to Me Sainted Ma. Those of you who are new to the channel or, or, or just got here relatively recently might know that this character makes appearances in some of my videos. I had an, an old Irish Catholic mother uh, who was a dear friend of mine. She was she was a mother, and she was a disciplinarian, and then I, there were gaps and passages when I wasn't around. And then I had the incredible gift that doesn't come to enough people. You can't arrange it. You ha it sort of has to happen. Of being her friend for the last 20 years of her life. And... Boy, oh boy. <laughs> I mean, what what we tell our children, that you will never have a relationship more important than the relationship you have with your mother. No one will ever love you quite as much as she does. That is absolutely true. But yikes. Having a mother who is your best friend, they know literally everything there is to know about you. There's nothing better. <laughs> and I didn't know that. I had no, no way of knowing it, no way of even suspecting it until it happened. So I, I'm tremendously grateful for that. Wish she, that she'd been around for book two. That would be great. Uh, although, <laughs> I'm sure that she would disapprove. <laughs> what, are you talking into a camera to strangers? Like some nut on the street? <laughs> like a wild man of Borneo, you can't fix your hair? <laughs> uh, but the second the second M would go to the aforementioned Mail and Moore, my, my beautiful, slim, sleek, intelligent, obedient, meek pointer, who was my Basset Hound Lucy's sister for her whole life. They lived their whole lives together. They outlived the last of my beagles when they were little, when they were when they were Frida's age or a little older, and just kept going. They were my girls. They were a steady, rock-solid feature of my world. Everyone who knew me knew the girls. How are the girls? Say goodnight to the girls for me. Uh, which made it, it, you know, it made it all the harder when I started to lose them. I knew that it was going to happen. It's the duty of every dog owner. You have to take care of the end, just like you take care of every other part. And I knew that there was no chance they would die together. And I was I was worried about that, of course. And uh, and Lucy died first, and that was, in a way, the less fortunate of the alternatives because Lucy didn't care about Malin either. <laughs> Lucy was a complete psychopath; she didn't care about anybody. So, if if Malin had died first, Lucy would have been comparatively unaffected. But Lucy doted on, or Malin doted on Lucy, and uh, when Lucy died, a big chunk of Malin's reason for living went with her, and you could just see it. 
you could just see it in her, on her face. And I, I determined, okay, well, you don't want to go yet, and you're not, you're not failing yet. You're just really sad. Okay, I'm, I'm here for you if you're sad. It, the, you know, I'll just, I'll just keep taking care of you until, until your time comes. Uh, and the third Meg uh, is another female that means a lot to me. Meg. <laughs> so the third M is Meg. Megalodon. Megalodon Carcarius, the a giant prehistoric killer shark that is the star of Steve Alton's series of Meg novels, the greatest works of literature in the history of humankind. Uh, then N is for nonfiction. Uh, even now, with the explosion of BookTube 2.0, a huge exfoliation of channels of all different kinds, uh, it's still probably predictable, and it's still definitely true, that fiction gets more love than nonfiction. Uh, that's just an accurate reflection of the reading world in general. People prefer fiction <laughs> to nonfiction. Uh, but I love nonfiction. I absolutely love it. I think that it's ten times more exciting and involving than fiction. So I'm often talking about it on this channel. <laughs> uh, P is for publicists, which is a group of people that most readers don't even think about. Uh, but they are some of my favorite people to deal with. I just love them. They are the people at any publishing house whose job it is to uh, form a bridge, the direct bridge between the market and the publishing house itself. Publisher might occasionally pen a sententious note, you know, in, in the, on the flyleaf of Tom Wolfe's new book or something like that, that's meant to brag about their own status in the world. But the publicists are down in the trenches. They are the ones who have to work out the ways to describe the books that come down the chute to them. They have to work out the ways to work with the authors. They have to work out the ways to sell the book. They are the first people to sell the book to an audience as opposed to selling it to the house, to an agent. They have to sell it to people who don't have any interest whatsoever. They have to generate interest in their pub sheets, which we read on this channel all the time, in the jacket copy that you read in bookstores. And they don't get enough credit. They certainly don't get enough money. <laughs> but I absolutely love them. They are, they are a, a highlight of my day to deal with. Uh, then Q is another author, Quintus of Smyrnia, Quintus Smyrnius, uh, who was... Uh, Again, he's not all that well known. <laughs> he wrote he wrote a book of what happens after Homer's Iliad, the post Homerica. He wrote a, he wrote a book uh, completing the story of the Iliad, telling it and also completing it. And uh, it's long, and it's been translated a couple of times into English, and I love it. And uh, it was also the inspiration for my own novel about the Trojan War, Troy War, uh, and. Uh, I wish that it that it was better known, but that's okay. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't for Q. I couldn't leave Quintus Smyrnius off. Who else am I going to put on here? <laughs> uh, then R is for reviewing, specifically book reviewing, which is what I do. Those of you who are new to the channel might not know that if you haven't scoped out my BookTube newbie tag or my BookTube identity tag. Uh, but I am a book reviewer, not not just uh, you know informally, but also formally. I, I am a professional book reviewer. Uh, and have been for a long time, and then there was a long gap where I wasn't, and then before that there was a long time when I was. <laughs> so, uh, then S, well, how could S stand for anything but strip cover lit? Right? The founders of our feast, our hosts, uh, who made this tag, and whose channel, I will link to their channel down below, I will try to remember to do that, but their channel is wonderful, so you really, you really should subscribe if you don't already. Uh, then, let's see here, T is for tense and taut traps which I also possess. Uh, then uh, U is for unity. And this is if, if Adrian, who is as, about as crusty as a booktuber can get, can actually descend to sentiment at one point in his tag, then I'm going to do the same thing. For, I'm going to use unity as the U prompt, because I'm, I want to talk about the wonderful unity of this community. I, was, I, was, I spend time sojourning elsewhere on YouTube in other, what could be called other YouTube communities. And oh my god, BookTube, if you spend all your time on BookTube, you just have no idea how poisonous the rest of YouTube is. All of it is driven by petty squabbles and people doxing and swatting each other left and right, and just vicious acid in the comments. The, the, stuff that, the kind of stuff where these, there are people out there who get this stuff, 20 and 30 comments like that every video. And they just keep making videos. And, and where, whereas on BookTube, when a person shows up in the comments field and is rude, Everybody notices it. Often other people in the comments field will comment on it. Gee, that was kind of rude, wasn't it? And booktubers themselves 
notice it. And when they get together, they talk about that one comment. They talk about that one person, that one thing that was said. That's how rare it is on BookTube. Whereas in on the rest of BookTube, oh my God, there are there are vlog channels that are at war with each other. There are vlog channels where every single person in the squad has some sort of uh, federal, state, or local crime attributed to them, and they're they're all dodging and making apology videos. It's sickening, <laughs> absolutely sickening. So the unity that we have here, the community that we have here, is worth touting even if it is a, a triple on the sappy side. We get along. Mostly, we get along, and that's a lot of fun. Uh, so, there you go. <laughs> uh, then, uh, V stands for an author named Vasily Grossman. Uh, Vasily Grossman wrote one of the greatest novels of the 20th century, a gigantic Russian novel called Life and Fate. Uh, and you might think that that's why he's on my mind. <laughs> but... Uh, there's another reason why he's on my mind. He also wrote another enormous book. And <laughs> well, if it shows up on this channel, as I mentioned, you will hear me squeal all up and down the eastern seacoast. <laughs> so he's on my mind lately. I am deep delving into Vasily Grossman now, and I plan on doing that for a couple of months. So he's on my mind. Uh, then let's see. W is washboard abs, which I have. Uh, then X would be Xenophon. The, uh, the ancient author Xenophon, who uh, was part of a, he had a landmark Xenophon edition that was just beautiful, had maps and essays and notes and illustrations of all kinds. He wrote a whole bunch of books, ranging from the slim and didactic instruction manuals, basically, to impressions of people that he knew, to the active history of his time, which he directly participated in. It's an amazing body of work. I don't think it gets the credit that it deserves. Uh, well, it no classical authors get credit outside of classical circles anyway, but even so, Xenophon is not well known. If you if you say Socrates, sure. If you say Plato, sure. If you say Xenophon, people say, what, who? What now? <laughs> so, so I thought I'd mention him here at the end of the alphabet. Uh, then W uh, would be William Dudley Yeats, a, a poet who, on this channel, on Tuesdays, I am now grappling with contemporary poetry. And uh, basically, I realized that I am... When I categorize contemporary poetry, I am basically saying after William Butler Yeats. He is the last poet who makes immediate sense to me on the page. Where I, with, with a few exceptions, Frank O'Hara, uh, James Merrill, uh, Anne Sexton, uh, Elizabeth Bishop, a few, but not not anywhere near the number of, of uh, poets that are out there. Whereas Yeats was the last one that makes immediate sense to me in the same way that Longfellow does, in the same way that uh, Whittier does, in the same way that uh, Dryden does. It, which is n not just a question of craft, but also of tone, of poetic tone, of, of uh, underneath everything else, the bedrock assertion that I have the right to your attention, uh, which is the oldest of all poetic presumptions and is completely missing from what we call contemporary poetry, so uh, I, I thought I'd use him here as sort of a benchmark for my poetry series. I am, I am thrashing here on the other side because I am fighting with my, with my little schnauzer. She's, she's fighting with me. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> she's just in a feisty mood. Uh, and then we get all the way to the end. Uh, that is the letter Z, and Z stands for Zac Efron, who would, I assume, play me in the movie of my life. Uh, and there you go. That is the the uh, the uh, bets tag from Strip Cover Lid from Adrian at Strip Cover Lid. Another fantastic tag. Uh, I noticed, couldn't help but notice that his the last one they did, fifty two nifty bookish questions, uh, has gone everywhere on BookTube. Just everywhere. It is it is a viral tag. Everybody loves doing it. I'm hoping that everybody will love this one too. I'm hoping that these things get that kind of response just across the board because they deserve it. Uh, so that's that's our second tag. Two tag day, uh, uh, but I, we've got plenty of other stuff to talk about as well. Lots of bookish stuff, uh, so I'm gonna uh, fight with Frida Bean <laughs> for, for to try to siphon off some of this weird homicidal energy. Uh, but I'll be back. Thank you, book two. <laughs>